welcome back. Egyptian and foreign marine biologists are in the Red Sea resort of Sharm el Sheikh trying to solve the mystery of a series of recent and unprecedented shark attacks that left four tourists, three Russians and a Ukrainian badly injured and unfortunately a German tourist dead. Well, uh, the situation over there, we're going to find out more about what is going on. We have the pleasure to have with us today in the studio uh, a long-time dive instructor, Mr. John Kim. Good morning and welcome on our breakfast show. And a very good morning to you. Mm. Mr. John, you've been living here in Sharm el for over 12 years. Have you ever um, encountered such incident before? Did such attacks occur over the past mm. years? Not only have I never encountered such an incident, I don't think anyone in living memory has uh, encountered this for years and years. Um, to put things into perspective, we have a lot of sharks in the Red Sea that sometimes you just never see. We're not really part of their, uh, their food chain. Divers are very unusual. We have uh, bright colored wetsuits, we've got metal tanks, we've got bubbles. And for many years, there's been a very, very good interaction. Now, this is unprecedented because of the amount of attacks there's been. There's been the odd isolated incident over the years. This is extremely rare. It's very random. And normally the result of inappropriate action or spearfishing or feeding or erratic behavior. Something's always wrong. There's always a reason. So to, to suddenly have a, a volume of this magnitude is, is most unusual. Um, so before we proceed, just I can see uh, on the screen right now you are diving with sharks and you know what I know is that we have about 350 species of sharks living in the oceans of planet Earth. It varies, of course, we are talking about the big sizes like the white uh, great uh, whale or white shark. The great uh, white. To 13 meters uh, in length, I, I think so, to the dwarf one, which is 25 centimeters. Uh, what we know that sharks are friendly with divers. They have to behave in a very special attitude. Just as I can, I can see you here on the screen, you are playing with, with what happened? This particular footage is the Bahamas. This is not in Sharm el Sheikh. This wouldn't work in uh, the waters of the Red Sea. Uh, that was a, a, a long established company who specialized in doing feeds and in an area where it's very warm water, there's lots of sharks, lots of fish, it doesn't affect the ecosystem there. Because they're specialized in what they're doing, uh, it, there's a very clear distinction about who's feeding the fish and who isn't. So for example, the divers who are watching would uh, be very still, they'd be in a ring, uh, the two professionals would come down with the, the box full of fish, they're feeding it, and only about five or six of those sharks out of the 30 would actually get anything. So they claim it doesn't really affect the the general ecosystem there. You can argue that one either way. Um, when you have uh, normal divers and, and, and sharks in the area, for example, we live and work in Sharm el Sheikh, we're guiding, we're teaching. Uh, one of the biggest complaints this summer was there's not enough sharks. Where have the sharks gone? We want to see more. So this is a normal diver uh, attraction, if you like. Um, the sharks, we have uh, white tips, not to be confused with the oceanic white tip. Uh, hammerheads, uh, grey reef, maybe leopard sharks. And over the years, you could expect to see many of these, usually a bit deeper from a distance. Uh, the divers would come up, take a picture, and before you know it, they'd be gone. So there's a very clear uh, line between divers and sharks. They, they really don't want to know us. We have to be doing something very, very wrong or inappropriate to attract any sort of shark uh, threatening behavior, if you like. Okay, what are the possible scenarios that you were just mentioning? What could have happened? Uh, the fact that these attacks occurred within a very short period of time at a, and they occur at a certain or specific time of the day, it indicates that something had happened and you can trace it because it ha just happened recently. Yes, uh, it happened between a, I, I believe it's a, a, a five kilometer stretch. Um, they, they're looking into many theories at the moment. There's a lot of rumors and speculation, and of course it's Sean, there's a, everyone's up for a good story. But the, uh, you have to look at it sensibly. Uh, you have to tell the difference between what is a theory or speculation and hard evidence, which is uh, what I believe they're doing now, by having Egyptian and international scientists and, and experts in these fields come in and take a very good look. Normally, your interactions in the sea are, uh, in diver education, we, we learn this very early on about how to interact, what to do and what not to do. 
we talk about uh, dangerous fish, but sometimes people don't know how they're dangerous. This doesn't mean they come and chase you or attack you. It means uh, the same as, say, what we have here, uh, electricity, fire, broken glass. These won't leap out and get us, but if we start to go up and prod them and poke them and play around with them, then yes, we, have a, we, we can have a problem. So you could say that uh, divers have an advantage over swimmers and snorkelers because they've learnt this early on. It's also up to now you have uh, snorkeling guides on the boats who also should know this information. Perhaps people coming through the hotels, and I believe that uh, many of the victims were not actually part of an organized snorkeling trip where perhaps they may have had this information. But regardless, uh, I think whether they were on a trip or along the coast, this was uh, such unusual behavior by the shark. I don't believe these people did anything wrong anyway. They were swimming. I don't think they were recorded as uh, feeding the fish or harassing or acting inappropriately, which is why the decision was made to close the area until they can establish the cause. And slowly they will filter that back in when they're happy that the risk has been dramatically reduced. Um, after the attacks or from the attacks, can you tell what kind of sharks caused this? This information is a little bit sketchy because uh, unless you're there, again, the people witnessing the attacks are not knowledgeable. I mean, the scientists, after studying the situation. Yeah, it, it's based on evidence now and witness reports. It's believed to be an oceanic white tip. Now, these are uh, normally, they, they do not behave like this. There's videographers in the Red Sea who have hundreds of hours of footage of oceanic white tips interacting very normally with uh, divers. They will have a look, they will get close, they will swim around and go away. So if you then start to do, uh, there are instances before of people who have thought, well, they're friendly, they're coming up. I mean, there's been one going up and down the reef last year, they called it Matilda. You know, this is not a very aggressive, sharky name, it's uh, the name of something that's like a pet. And there's many photographs of this shark being seen and, and just swimming off. So it could even be the same shark. Maybe something's happened to make that shark behave differently. So it's not that all oceanics are dangerous. It could be one rogue shark, a random shark, that's just uh, had its behavior changed for a completely external event. Talking about what is, what is going on now in Sharm el-Sheikh, are efforts concentrating on investigating the possible causes of the recent shark attacks or efforts to hunt and kill the shark? I think as the initial attacks and the events unfolded, uh, there just wasn't enough information. When, when you get one in the past, which is extremely rare, you could attribute it to a certain sort of action or, or inappropriate action. Um, now they are trying to go through the motions of, yes, establishing the cause. Uh, there was an incident a few weeks ago when a big ship was passing through. They had a lot of livestock, and I believe 200 sheep were were dead and they threw them over the side. This has got nothing to do with Sharm. This is a, a random event. It, if, if that's the case, then it was the fault of the ship, which is long gone. Uh, those would have floated to the shore in that area. Uh, there's a feed for the shark, so perhaps they had a, a feed for a while. That's disappeared. They've been conditioned to go to this area, look for, that, uh, look for those dead sheep, and the only thing that's there is the tourists, the, the swimmers and snorkelers. That's one of the theories that's being looked at at the moment. Okay, talking about this point, could this incident be enough to change the nature of sharks in this area? Um, that in my field as a diving instructor, I couldn't really answer that. It's outside my area of expertise. That's for the marine biologists or the shark behavioral uh, experts. Um, I would like to think that that situation wouldn't last for very long. Um, if there isn't that constant source of food that they've been used to, then they might go elsewhere. As for the hunting, um, a lot of people, uh, nobody wants to see sewers and snorkelers being attacked by sharks. But on the other hand, uh, sharks are only doing what they're designed to do. They're predators. So to hunt them and fish them and kill them and get rid of them just to please, or are you pleasing people? It, it's a question that's going to go on for a while. So this is not the solution from your own point of view? Um, if you have one rogue shark with, uh, with very bad behavior, which is for reasons perhaps not explained that's constantly doing this, you can argue that yes, that needs to be taken out uh, or moved or, or studied. Um, but just to simply fish out lots of sharks because they're there, uh, 
where will it end? This is, this is a different question. Well, tell me, are sharks aggressive by nature? As I said, we have many different species. They're, okay, over many, many years in the waters of uh, all over the Red Sea, people have been happily swimming, snorkeling, diving. Uh, thousands of people a day are in the Red Sea. And the instances of shark attacks is, is almost negligible. So from that point of view, no. Uh, they are aggressive when certain things change, if they feel threatened. Same as us, if we get poked or prodded or harassed or threatened, we will run, we will fight, we will hide. And uh, if, if, a, if a food source dries up, uh, this has also been argued, uh, might their behavior change towards some who are already there? So the short answer is, I mean, you, one should feel safe. We tell our guests and students that there is nothing in the Red Sea that will come and get you. Um, Clownfish, Nemo's, they, they often swim up and harass you, but they've got no teeth, they're not very big. But all the other predators, as long as you're behaving in a certain way, uh, which is very well known, then you should expect not to be harassed by anything at all. And this is what's been happening for many, many years. Okay, Mr. John Keen, dive instructor, thank you so much for being with us this morning. And thank you very much, and I hope everyone continues to come to Sharm. It's a wonderful place. We do hope the same. Uh, under the auspices of the Ministry of Culture and Producer,